Welcome to today's video, where we're diving into one of the most groundbreaking books in the field of business, psychology, and behavioral science, Robert Cialdini's Influence, The Psychology of Persuasion. This seminal work has been an essential guide for understanding the intricate mechanisms that govern human behavior, specifically how people say yes and why. Published initially in 1984 and continually updated to reflect new research, this book has been translated into multiple languages and has sold millions of copies worldwide. What makes influence so compelling? Cialdini, a psychology professor with extensive research experience, masterfully dissects the psychological triggers that lead us to make decisions, often without our conscious awareness. He outlines six fundamental principles of persuasion, reciprocity, commitment and consistency, social proof, liking, authority, and scarcity. Each principle taps into our deeply ingrained cognitive shortcuts and social norms, making them powerful tools in the hands of marketers, politicians, and anyone looking to influence behavior. But influence isn't just for the business-minded or the academically curious, it's a book for everyone. Why? Because each of us navigates a complex world of decision-making daily, whether choosing a product, voting for a political candidate, or even interacting with friends and family. By understanding the mechanisms of influence, we can make more informed decisions and guard against manipulation. So, whether you're a student seeking to understand human psychology, a business person looking to improve your negotiation skills, or just a curious individual wanting to understand the subconscious drivers of human action, you're in for a treat. Let's dive into the fascinating world of Robert Cialdini's Influence, The Psychology of Persuasion, and explore how these principles impact our daily lives and how we can use them responsibly and ethically. Robert Cialdini's principle of reciprocity in his seminal work, Influence, The Psychology of Persuasion, explores a fundamental tenet of human behavior, that of returning a favor. This principle posits that humans have an innate desire to repay what is given to them. Whether it's a physical gift, a kind gesture, or even an unrequested favor, the recipient often feels a psychological burden to reciprocate. The rule of reciprocity, Cialdini, starts by explaining the rule of reciprocity, a social norm ingrained in various cultures worldwide. From childhood, People are taught that it's polite and socially correct to give back when they have received something. The rule is simple. If someone gives you something, you should give something back in return. The depth of its influence. The reciprocity rule is so deeply ingrained that it often triggers an automatic response. Even when the initial favor is uninvited, people feel a strong urge to respond. The recipient may even comply with a substantially larger request from the giver as a form of reciprocation. This is why small tokens or free samples can often pave the way for more significant commitments and sales. The principle in action Cialdini provides multiple real-world examples to illustrate how the rule works in everyday situations. From Hare Krishnas, giving out flowers in airports to entice donations to free samples in supermarkets that lead to increased sales, the principle is routinely exploited to influence behavior. In sales and marketing, free trials or introductory offers capitalize on this principle. Once a customer has received something for free, the psychological burden to return the favor, usually by making a purchase, becomes substantial. Obligation over free will. A key point Cialdini makes is that the sense of obligation can overpower rational choice. The pressure to reciprocate can compel people to act against their best interests. This strong obligation often results in unequal exchanges, giving back more than what was initially received. 
Culturally, Universal Cialdini also discusses the ubiquity of the reciprocity rule across different cultures. Whether it's a tribal society or a modern urban setting, the principle appears to be a universal human constant. This universality implies that the rule has perhaps evolved as a survival mechanism, enhancing social cohesion and cooperation. Manipulative use and defense Cialdini warns that while the principle itself is benign, its manipulative use is not. Understanding the power of this principle, some people use it strategically to get what they want. Being aware of this manipulation allows one to exert conscious control over the decision to reciprocate, thereby safeguarding one's interests. The Rejection Then Retreat Technique The chapter also elaborates on advanced tactics like the Rejection Then Retreat Technique. Here, an initial large request is made expecting it to be refused, followed by a much smaller request. The smaller request is what the requester actually hopes to have granted. The rejection of the larger request makes the smaller request appear more reasonable, and the sense of concession creates an added urge to reciprocate. Ethical Implications The ethical implications of the principle are also discussed. Is it ethical to give something with the sole intention of getting something much bigger in return? Cialdini argues that the line between ethical influence and manipulation is thin but essential. Using the principle ethically implies creating win-win situations where both parties benefit. Conclusion in summary, Robert Cialdini's chapter on reciprocity in Influence, the Psychology of Persuasion offers a comprehensive look into one of the most powerful principles governing human interaction. Its innate and culturally ubiquitous nature makes it a favorite tool in the repertoire of influencers, marketers, and negotiators. However, understanding the mechanics of this principle not only allows individuals to wield it effectively, but also protects them from its potential misuse. Awareness of how this rule operates can equip people to navigate a world full of both genuine gestures and manipulative ploys, enabling more informed and balanced decisions. Now let's take a look at the principle of commitment and consistency, examining how these psychological mechanisms influence human behavior. This chapter explores the compelling power of personal and interpersonal consistency, illuminating how our innate desire to be consistent in our actions, beliefs, and commitments drives us to make specific choices. Why Consistency Matters Cialdini starts the chapter by discussing why humans value consistency so highly. He argues that a consistent orientation provides a valuable shortcut for making decisions in a complex, demanding world. The need for consistency stems from social, cognitive, and personal factors. It helps to simplify life and offers a sense of intellectual security. Cognitive dissonance. The idea of cognitive dissonance is critical to understanding commitment and consistency. Cognitive dissonance refers to the mental discomfort one feels when holding two or more contradictory beliefs, values, or attitudes simultaneously. To alleviate this discomfort, people will often alter their beliefs or actions to make them more consistent with each other. The desire for harmony among our thoughts, feelings, and actions can drive us to lengths that are often irrational. Foot in the door technique. One of the most intriguing tactics related to commitment and consistency is the foot in the door technique. This involves making a small request that a person is likely to say yes to and then following it up with a larger, related request. The strategy operates on the principle that agreeing to the small request shows a commitment, making it psychologically harder for the person to refuse the subsequent larger request. 
Case Studies and Experiments Cialdini presents various case studies and experiments to illustrate the power of this principle. In one experiment, homeowners who initially agreed to place a small sign advocating safe driving in their front yards were substantially more likely to agree to place a much larger, more obtrusive sign later. Their initial commitment to promoting safe driving made it inconsistent for them to refuse the more significant request. The Public Nature of Commitment The impact of the commitment is magnified when it is made publicly. Humans are wired to care about their social standing and reputation. Public commitments, therefore, have a stronger binding effect because they tap into our fear of public embarrassment or ridicule if we fail to follow through. Written Commitments Cialdini also discusses the increased weight of commitments that are actively made and then documented or written down. The act of writing not only makes the commitment more explicit, but also involves a physical action, which amplifies the psychological impact. Self-perception and identity commitment and consistency are closely tied to self-perception and identity. When we make a choice or commit to a position publicly, we internalize it as a part of our self-image. This internalization makes us more likely to continue to act in ways consistent with that choice, even if the original reasons for making that choice are removed. Escalation of Commitment Cialdini also discusses the phenomenon of escalation of commitment, where individuals commit more resources, time, money, effort, to a failing course of action simply because they have already committed some resources. This is often seen in bad business decisions, troubled relationships, and even in the phenomenon of sunk costs in economics. Manipulative uses and ethical considerations. Like other principles of influence, the commitment and consistency principle can be exploited for manipulative purposes. Organizations may use it unethically to trap people into a cycle of escalating commitments. Cialdini cautions the reader to be aware of this principle's manipulative uses, not just to guard against them, but also to employ them ethically. The Role of Free Choice A critical point made is that commitments are most effective when they appear to be freely chosen. Coerced or imposed commitments do not have the same psychological weight because they do not tie into our self-image in the same way that freely chosen commitments do. Inoculation means influence. One of the concluding messages is that understanding the mechanisms behind these influential techniques can act as a sort of inoculation, protecting individuals from their potentially negative effects. Awareness is the first step towards freedom, allowing for a rational reassessment of one's commitments and an adjustment of actions accordingly. Conclusion In summary, the principle of commitment and consistency forms an essential cornerstone in Cialdini's exploration of influence and persuasion. It operates on multiple psychological, social, and cognitive levels serving both as a survival mechanism and as a potential vulnerability. Recognizing and understanding this principle can empower individuals to make more informed decisions, guard against manipulation, and even use these tools ethically in influencing others. The profound insight that we are not just rational beings, but are deeply influenced by a web of psychological principles, offers a more nuanced understanding of human behavior. Social Proof is a fascinating exploration into how humans rely on the behavior of others to dictate their own actions, especially in uncertain situations. The principle of Social Proof posits that when people are unsure about what to do, they look to others to guide their decisions and actions. Why Social Proof Works Cialdini begins by discussing the underpinnings of Social Proof as a psychological mechanism. 
He posits that social proof serves as a mental shortcut or heuristic, allowing us to quickly make decisions without much cognitive effort. This is particularly useful in complex, confusing, or ambiguous situations. It is a survival mechanism built into our psychology, enabling us to function in social settings. The Power of the Crowd One of the most compelling aspects of social proof is the influence of the crowd. Cialdini explains that the more people doing something in a particular way, the more correct that way seems. This can manifest in various scenarios, from people choosing restaurants that look busy to the mass behavior observed during emergency situations. Laugh tracks and applause signs. Cialdini discusses how the principle of social proof is often manipulated, intentionally or otherwise, through external cues. For example, laugh tracks in television shows serve to amplify the humor compelling the audience at home to find things funnier than they might otherwise. Similarly, applause signs prompt studio audiences to clap, indicating approval and swaying viewers at home. Social proof in marketing. The principle is highly effective in the realm of advertising and marketing. Customer testimonials, online reviews, and celebrity endorsements work because they offer social proof that the product or service is valuable. Companies are aware of the impact of showing that everyone is doing it and they use it to their advantage. Social norms and peer pressure peer pressure is another form of social proof. The need to belong and to be accepted by one's peer group can often lead individuals to conform to the group's standards, even when these standards conflict with personal beliefs or moral values. This is a strong example of how social proof can overpower rational decision-making. Pluralistic ignorance. An intriguing aspect of social proof is the concept of pluralistic ignorance, where each person in a group assumes that others possess more knowledge about what constitutes appropriate behavior. This can lead to situations where no one acts, even in emergencies, because everyone is looking to everyone else for cues. Cialdini provides chilling real-life examples of this, including cases where crimes were committed in full view of witnesses who failed to intervene. The Role of Similarity Cialdini also highlights that social proof is most effective when we see people who are similar to us providing the proof. This is because we are more likely to consider their actions as more applicable to our own situation. Marketers often use this knowledge to tailor advertising campaigns to specific demographics, the bystander effect. The chapter examines phenomena like the bystander effect where the presence of a crowd inhibits individual action. The assumption here is that if something were genuinely wrong, then someone else in the crowd would have already acted. This diffuses the sense of personal responsibility among individuals in the crowd, often with tragic outcomes. The dark side of social proof Cialdini does not shy away from discussing the darker implications of social proof. From its role in promoting harmful social practices to its use in the justification of prejudices, social proof can be a force for both good and bad. The herd mentality can lead to a downward spiral of behavior where negative actions are normalized through collective validation. Guarding against manipulation. Understanding how social proof works provides a safeguard against its potential to manipulate. Cialdini encourages readers to be aware of when they are most susceptible to social proof, typically in situations of uncertainty or ambiguity, and to exercise critical thinking even when it is most comfortable to follow the crowd. Conclusion. In summary, the chapter on social proof in Robert Cialdini's Influence the Psychology of Persuasion is a deep dive into a psychological principle 
that governs a significant part of human behavior. Its ubiquitous presence in daily life, from advertising to social interactions, makes it one of the most potent tools in the influencer's arsenal. Yet, its power can be double-edged, sometimes leading people into undesirable situations. Understanding this principle offers valuable insights for both wielding influence more effectively and defending against manipulation. The takeaway is that while social proof is an essential aspect of human psychology, its influence should not go unexamined or unchecked. In Robert Cialdini's groundbreaking book, Influence the Psychology of Persuasion, the chapter on authority tackles one of the most potent factors that drive human behavior, our tendency to comply with those perceived as authority figures. Cialdini discusses how people often suspend their judgment to follow authority, and he unpacks the psychology and consequences of this mechanism. The Roots of Obedience to Authority Cialdini begins by exploring why we are so programmed to respond to authority. The principle of authority is ingrained in us from a young age when we learn to listen to our parents, teachers, and other authority figures. This pattern is not inherently harmful. In fact, it is often beneficial, helping us navigate the complexities of society by providing shortcuts to decision-making. We often rely on experts and professionals for guidance in areas we're not familiar with, from medicine to law to financial advice. Symbols of Authority Cialdini identifies key symbols often associated with authority, including titles, clothing, and equipment. For example, professionals like doctors or lawyers with identifiable credentials inspire trust. Uniforms and attire, such as a police officer's uniform or a doctor's white coat, can also evoke a sense of authority. Even accessories like badges, specialized equipment, or even an expensive car can lend an air of credibility. Experiments and Studies To ground his claims, Chialdini references numerous experiments that illustrate the influence of authority. Among the most famous is Stanley Milgram's obedience experiment, in which participants were persuaded to administer electric shocks to another individual, simply because an authoritative figure told them to do so. This disturbing study reveals the lengths to which people will go to obey authority, even when it conflicts with their moral compass. Automaticity of the response. One of the crucial points that Cialdini makes is the automatic nature of our response to authority. Very often, people obey commands from authority figures without much conscious thought. This automaticity can lead to negative outcomes when the authority is either malicious or incompetent. It also opens the door to manipulation by those who understand how to exploit this automatic response, the role of responsibility. An interesting aspect of the obedience to authority is the shifting of responsibility. When following an authority figure, individuals often feel less personally accountable for their actions. This diffusion of responsibility can lead to unethical or harmful behavior, as seen in real-world examples ranging from war crimes to corporate malfeasance. Authority in Sales and Marketing the principle of authority is frequently employed in advertising and sales. Companies often use celebrity endorsements or experts to vouch for the efficacy of their products or services. The message is clear. If this person, who is an authority in their field, approves of the product, then it must be good. The Power of Context Cialdini emphasizes that the power of authority isn't static, but is highly contextual. An individual who is an authority in one setting may not have the same influence in another. The recognition of authority can also be socially constructed, making it susceptible to manipulation through social proof, another principle that Cialdini discusses in his book. Ethical Considerations 
Cialdini raises important questions about the ethical implications of using the principle of authority. Just because you can influence people to comply doesn't mean you should, particularly if it's not in their best interest. He argues that it's essential to employ the principle responsibly and ethically, making sure that the authority being projected is genuine and the guidance provided is sound. How to guard against unwarranted authority. Towards the end of the chapter, Cialdini offers advice on how to protect oneself from the undue influence of authority. He suggests a critical mindset, questioning the credentials and motivations of the authority figure before complying with their directives. This involves stepping back from the situation, even momentarily, to assess it more objectively. Conclusion In summary, the chapter on authority in Robert Cialdini's Influence, the Psychology of Persuasion, delves into a powerful principle that shapes human behavior in profound ways. The tendency to follow authority figures can be both a useful survival mechanism and a potential vulnerability that can be exploited. By dissecting the roots, manifestations, and impacts of this principle, Cialdini not only educates the reader about how influence works but also provides valuable insights on how to wield this power responsibly or defend against its misuse. This chapter compels us to scrutinize our often automatic obedience to authority, prompting more conscious decision-making in our interactions with those who hold power. In this next section on liking and scarcity, Cialdini delves into these two persuasive principles that deeply impact human behavior. While liking explores the factors that make us more susceptible to being influenced by people we like, scarcity examines how the perception of limited availability increases an item's perceived value. Together, these chapters offer valuable insights into the psychology of persuasion. Liking, the influence of affinity, the power of likability. Cialdini discusses the universal principle that people are more likely to be influenced by individuals they like. This is the basis for friendships, romantic relationships, and even successful sales techniques. The affinity doesn't have to be deep. Even superficial liking can lead to a greater chance of compliance. Factors that increase liking Cialdini identify several factors that make us like people more, including physical attractiveness, similarity, compliments, and association. For example, we are more likely to be influenced by someone who compliments us, even when the flattery is transparently self-serving. Association One of the most potent factors is the power of association. Cialdini illustrates how associating with either good or bad things can influence how people feel about us. For example, a messenger bearing good news is often liked more, while one bearing bad news is disliked, irrespective of their role in the matter. Exploitation in Marketing and Sales This principle is commonly exploited in sales and marketing. Salespeople often build rapport with potential customers to increase their likability, thereby increasing the likelihood of making a sale. Companies use likable celebrities to endorse products, banking on their ability to sway public opinion. Guarding Against Manipulative Liking Cialdini concludes the chapter by advising readers to be aware of the liking principle, especially when it comes to decision-making. Recognizing when you like someone can help you evaluate whether this affection is influencing your judgment. Scarcity the rule of the few perceived value. The principle of scarcity is simple. Things that are scarce are perceived as more valuable. Whether it's a limited edition item or time-sensitive information, scarcity generates demand. Psychological underpinning Cialdini explores the psychology behind this principle, discussing how scarcity triggers a sense of urgency and activates our fear of missing out, FOMO. 
This fear can lead to irrational decision-making and impulsive actions. The Reactance Theory The chapter discusses psychological reactance, which is a motivational response to restrictions on our freedom. When something becomes scarce, we are more motivated to attain it, as if to assert our freedom of choice. Experiments and Observations Cialdini refers to experiments that demonstrate how scarcity influences choices, from cookies in a jar to real estate decisions. In one experiment, participants valued a cookie in a jar of two cookies more than the same cookie when it was in a jar of ten, solely because it seemed more exclusive. Scarcity and marketing marketers often exploit this principle by using phrases like limited time offer or while supplies last to create a sense of urgency. Online stores use pop-up notifications indicating how many items are left in stock or how many people are looking at the same product. Scarcity and Quality Cialdini points out that scarcity is often confused with quality. If something is scarce, we assume it must be good, which is not always the case. This can lead to poor decision-making, especially in consumer choices. How to Counteract Scarcity Cialdini advises readers to be aware of their emotional reactions to scarcity. By stepping back and objectively evaluating the situation, one can better assess whether the scarce item is genuinely valuable or simply perceived as such due to its limited availability. Conclusion The chapters on liking and scarcity in Robert Cialdini's Influence, The Psychology of Persuasion, provide a comprehensive look at two principles that profoundly impact human behavior. While liking explores the nuances of interpersonal relationships and their influence on our decisions, scarcity dives into how the fear of missing out can often lead us astray. Together, they paint a picture of a human psyche that is both complex and susceptible to influence. Understanding these principles is not just academic, it has real-world applications. In sales, marketing, relationships, and everyday decisions, recognizing the power of liking and scarcity can make us more informed and less susceptible to manipulation. Cialdini offers not just a study, but also a guide, equipping us with the tools to navigate a world rife with influences vying for our compliance. His work challenges us to be more discerning, more skeptical, and ultimately more empowered in our choices and interactions. The seventh principle is unity. The unity principle suggests that people are more easily influenced by others who are like them, not just superficially, but in a shared sense of identity and belonging to the same group. If there is a chapter on unity in a new edition of Influence, the following points could potentially be the focus based on Cialdini's earlier works and presentations. The principle of unity, more than just liking Cialdini, likely would begin by differentiating unity from liking. While liking is about affection based on similarities, pleasant associations or compliments, unity goes deeper. It taps into the human desire to belong to a tribe or community, connecting on the level of shared identity. Categories of unity unity can manifest in various ways, including family relationships, geographical origins, and shared experiences. These categories often evoke strong emotional responses that influence decision-making, sometimes even subconsciously. Family Ties The family is the ultimate unit of unity for most people, and this principle often gets exploited in influence attempts. Family members are more likely to say yes to each other because they have a profound sense of shared identity. National and cultural unity. Geographical and cultural factors also create a strong sense of unity. This is often evident in politics, where politicians employ nationalist or regionalist sentiments to secure votes. 
they also use language skillfully to create an US versus them narrative, which taps into this principle. Shared experiences and values. Whether it's attending the same school, working in the same organization, or even surviving the same challenges, shared experiences can also create a strong sense of unity. Shared values, such as religious or ethical beliefs, can be equally potent. Unity in marketing and advertising Cialdini would probably point out how this principle is heavily utilized in the commercial world. Brands often build communities around their products or services, encouraging a sense of belonging among consumers. By doing so, they foster brand loyalty and increase the likelihood of repeat purchases. The dark side of unity. Like all tools of persuasion, the unity principle has a dark side. It can be used to manipulate and polarize groups of people, creating divisions that can be harmful or even dangerous. Chialdini might discuss the ethics of employing this principle, particularly in situations where it could lead to negative outcomes like discrimination or conflict. Overcoming Unwarranted Influence Towards the end of the chapter, Cialdini would likely offer advice on how to protect against undue influence stemming from the unity principle. Critical thinking, self-awareness, and an understanding of this principle are crucial to making more rational decisions, especially when the unity principle is at play. Conclusion The unity principle adds another layer of complexity to the psychology of persuasion. It taps into our deepest instincts for community and belonging, often influencing us in ways we are not even aware of. By understanding this principle, we become better equipped to navigate a world full of influence attempts, making decisions that are in our best interests while appreciating the genuine connections that enrich our lives.